The Lord be with you. Hear the word of the Lord from the gospel according to Revelation chapter 1 verses 4 through 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom. Priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of God for the people of God. I would invite you to look in your uh, bulletin. If you open it up, you'll see on one of the pages there our GPS, Grow, Pray, Study. There's some questions for reflection in the coming week and uh, and. Uh, space uh, for you to, uh, for prayer and, uh, and for readings, scripture readings, and then at the bottom space for if there's anything that jumps out at you during this sermon as we explore God's Word together, if there's something you want to go back and think about, feel free to jot it down in those sermon notes and, and keep it with you this week. It's really interesting this week after Easter. Traditionally, it is called Low Sunday. Low Sunday because you have had the high and holy yearly celebration of Easter. It is this big day. We put all our eggs into one basket, so to speak, on, on that day. You know, we have bring out the, the big music and we make sure all the choir members are going to be here. And the pastor works extra special hard on his sermon. And there might even be some great set pieces to, to utilize. And, and it's just, ah, oh, it's just this big high day. And then the next Sunday rolls around, and it's, it's Sunday. <laughs> We're celebrating Easter, second Sunday of Easter, but it's, we don't quite put the same oomph behind it. And so it's called Low Sunday. Several people think it's called Low Sunday because traditionally it's the lowest attended Sunday of the year. Um, that may or may not be the case uh, when we talk about it. But it is interesting to have that high and holy Easter and Then to see the Easter lilies get carted out and taken home, and those Easter lilies that don't get carted out and taken home, those beautiful white blooms begin to turn brown and wilt. You have to keep watering them, and even if you water them like we do, they still lose their vibrancy. And we've had the high and holy day of Easter, yet still friends that we know have undergone surgeries for difficult issues, And school has continued to go on for our teenagers as they're getting closer to the end of the semester. And, oh my goodness, do you know that now, now parents can check their teenagers' grades anytime they want to on the computer? You you can do that now. I did it this week. We won't talk about that. (laughs) Sometimes this time of year is difficult for teenagers in school. We run headlong into the reality that Jesus is risen, but there is still difficulty in life. We run headlong into the reality that there is resurrection power, yet still evil exists in our world. We run headlong into the understanding that that we have had the great and high and holy day, but yet the world is not yet as it should be. We live in what many theologians call the already but the not yet. Already, Christ has come, has lived and died and rose again, and resurrection power has been released into the world already. God's kingdom is on the move already. But the flip side to that is, is Jesus has not restored everything to the way it should be yet. And while the kingdom is on the move, It has not taken over yet. So we live in this strange time of the already, 
but not yet. Evil has been defeated, but evil is a sore loser and keeps thrashing about, trying to create as much pain and suffering and difficulty as possible. We have been redeemed by the blood of Christ, but yet our sinful natures still rise up and we hurt ourselves and others. The reality of Easter week two is that while there is resurrection and glory and alleluia, things are not yet perfect. They are not yet as God fully intends them to be. So we are, for the next couple of weeks, going to be looking at uh, the idea that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. As good as Easter is, you know, you, you have regular Sunday that's good, and then you have Easter Sunday that's better, but there's a day that's coming yet that is best. And we're going to be going through the book of Revelation together over the next few weeks, discovering what this best that is yet to come might be. Because the, the question is, is do we really believe that the best is yet to come? Do we truly believe that Jesus is alive, that he is no longer dead, and that he will return again someday to set all things right? This uh, past week, we were in confirmation, and I, we showed a little video. It's about a three, four-minute video about this idea that someday Christ is going to return again and set everything right. And we actually looked at the end of the book of Revelation, which we will do later in our series. But, we, you know, it was this good video, and we had, had discussion around this idea that, that, that Jesus is going to come and restore all things. And so I got done. We got done with the video, and I looked up at him. I said, so, where is this world headed? And the first response I got was, Trash. I said, didn't you just see the video? <laughs> Don't you listen to anything I say? Russ, you teach you. You've got to feel this sometimes, right? You know, um, what? But yet I understand where this student was coming from. If we look around our world, it is easy to think that the world is going to garbage. It is easy to think that things are not actually getting better, but rather that they are getting worse. I made the mistake of opening my news app on my phone this morning. First headline that pops up, synagogue shooting. One person killed, eight others injured. The next headline wasn't much better. I think it was about some natural disaster somewhere. If we look out at the world and we see where our culture is and what our culture values, almost the... the uh, the desire for self and selfishness, for pleasure, for I at any cost and any sake, to be distracted. We look out and we, it's easy to think sometimes that, yeah, the world is not going the way that it should be. It is not getting better. Now, we could have an, a, an intelligent conversation about this. The, the truth is, as much bad news as is out there, it is actually a better time to be a human than most other points in human history. It's hard to feel that way because we have so much more information and we have so much, uh, we, there is violence and now violence instead of being done with, you know, swords and arrows or more powerful weapons. But as we look around, it's hard to feel like things are actually getting better sometimes. But yet in our scripture today, there are a few things that we believe that tell us that the best is yet to come. So let's look back at what Jesus said in this vision to John. First, he starts off by saying, uh, he, he starts talking, he, he, gives, he addresses Jesus as the firstborn of the dead. We just had last week where we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we talked about his resurrection as, as being born from the dead. He was dead, and now he is alive. But if his title is the firstborn of the dead... Well, that means there's got to be a second born of the dead, right? If, uh, he, if elsewhere, Paul says that Jesus is the first, first fruits of the resurrection. And if Jesus is the first fruits, that means there's got to be some second fruits out there too, right? Now, I'm not calling you fruits, okay? Um, but yet that is the truth. 
is that Jesus, as the firstborn of the resurrection, that means that you and I, those who trust in him, we are the secondborn of the resurrection. We believe the best is yet to come because we truly believe that someday we will be resurrected with Jesus Christ. I talk about the resurrection fairly often with people. The Christian understanding of resurrection and of eternal life, by the way, is not that we are spirits out there floating on some cloud somewhere in a bunch of white light. The understanding of Christian resurrection and of eternity is that our bodies will be raised. There is a bodily resurrection. Just as Jesus' body was raised from the dead, so our bodies will be raised. But you know, if you read the Scriptures, something interesting is going on with Jesus' resurrection, right? I mean, Jesus is like showing up in locked rooms. Can, can your body do that? My, mine can't. It's like people are looking at him and they don't recognize him, but yet they do recognize him. And he's still got the scars from, uh, from the crucifixion, but they don't hurt him anymore. He is resurrected. There's something mysterious and wonderful going on in this resurrection. And what we believe is that it will be the same for you and for me someday. And I'll talk to people about this, and I've literally had people say, oh, well, if, if, if that's what's out there, I, I don't want anything to do with it. What are you talking about? They hate their bodies. We live in a culture that teaches us to hate our bodies. That if you are not a certain size, if you're not a certain look, if you're not a certain age, well, then you're not as valuable. And you need to watch what you eat and exercise and I mean, yes, that's good to be healthy. We should do that. I try and do that. But yet our culture overemphasizes our appearance so much that often people have a, a, a uh, dysfunctional relationship with their own bodies. When I tell them they're going to have a body in heaven, that really knocks them back for a loop. I say we're going to have a perfect body in heaven. That we're not going to have to worry about what we eat in the same way. We're going to have the perfect relationship, not just with God and other people, but even with ourselves. The best is yet to come because someday I won't have to worry about the fact that I don't have a gallbladder interfering with my Easter meal. Those of you without gallbladders know exactly what I'm talking about. We will be resurrected. We will have new bodies. Our best body is yet to come. One who believe that the best is yet to come because in our scripture today it says that he loves us. To him who loves us. You are loved by God. You are not just some faceless person in a crowd to Jesus. You are not just some nameless mass of humanity to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are known perfectly by your God, and you are loved deeply by your King. The best is yet to come because you are so loved from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Then we, if you are that loved, if you are that cherished, if you are that doted over by your Father in heaven, then don't you think he's going to take care of you? Don't you think he's going to take care of us? And that he's going to eventually take care of the problems of pain and suffering, of evil. You are loved. The best is yet to come. Not only are you loved, it says that to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. We're just saying nothing but the blood of Jesus together, right? By his death, friends, our sins are forgiven. Now, I'm going to have to admit to you, sometimes... I think we act like people who have been busted out of the prison of sin and we want to take up residence in our cell. Jesus has come and defeated sin. He has taken down the, the guard wall. He, there, he has taken out the security system. He has come. He has unlocked our cell of us in the prison of sin. And he has flung the doors wide open for us. We have forgiveness of sins. But the truth is, is often I don't walk out of that cell as quickly as I should. It's comfortable. It's nice. I like it. I have my little pet sins. They don't really hurt anyone, do they? 
Jesus says, you are freed from your sins. And this whole process, the whole reason you and I don't just get beamed up after we accept Christ is God is working in us to bring us freer and freer of our own sinfulness and to work in his world. The best is yet to come because God's going to keep working on us. Because God's going to keep refining us. God's going to keep making us better. Better people, better Christians. Because he has forgiven our sins. And we don't have to walk around in shame anymore. Why do we believe the best is yet to come? Because he has made us into a kingdom and priests. Often it feels like God's kingdom is over here and the world is over here. But the truth is, is that in Jesus Christ, that kingdom has started in this world and it kind of overlaps now. And you and I, as priests of his kingdom, we are tasked with the the purpose of trying to make this world look like his kingdom as much as we possibly can. We have given the purpose and meaning of, of working for the glory of God and making his kingdom more a reality here on earth. But the last reason we believe the best is yet to come is at the very end of our scripture where Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. We believe the best is yet to come because the Almighty is returning. And as much as we try to make this world look like God's kingdom, I don't think you and I will ever be able to make it happen on our own. But he can do it. The best is yet to come because Christ is returning and he is the best. The best is not a situation. The best is not an identity. The best is is not a, a kingdom or political system. The best is a person and his name is Jesus and he is returning. The truth of our scriptures. And he will make all things well, yes, all manner of things shall be made well. Our bishop of the Alabama West Florida Conference ends every email, every video, every time I hear him speak, he ends them with the words, the best is yet to come. And friends, we stand here today. We gather in this place because we believe it. Because we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in what he has done for us. That he loves us and has freed us from our sins. That he has sent us to be priests of a kingdom. And that he will return someday. Thanks be to God. Amen.